We're going to design a model predictive controller for an overhead crane. The overhead crane cart moves to the right or to the left with a force applied to it, and the object below is moved to a new position. So we're going to design a controller that is going to optimize the force applied to the overhead cart. So here are some equations that we're going to use. There's going to be four equations. We have position, velocity, we have the angle, and then we have the angular rate. And then we have our force of our cart. And this is going to be a state space model. So we have a matrix of values. This is our A matrix. And this is, it would be like our X dot equals A times X plus B times U. And the thing that we're going to try to control at the very end is not just one of the states, but we're going to have it be stationary at the final condition. So we're going to start from a stationary position, move over to the right with a length of 1, and then finish off in a final position. Okay, so this is a state space model. We'll apply it in a model predictive controller. So here's a little bit more data about the cart. We have a mass of the cart of 10 and the item that we're moving right down there that's going to be mass 2. And then we also have epsilon. Just to simplify this, we're going to have epsilon. If you saw that in the equation, here was epsilon. Okay, that's just going to be a fixed value because the masses aren't going to change throughout. Okay, the y is the overhead position of the cart, v is the velocity, theta is the angle of the pendulum, and Q is the rate of angle change. Okay, so all of these go into the equations for this overhead cart. And the objective is to move this, okay, starting at this location over to a final location and have the cart and the object at the very end stationary. Okay, so we need to adjust the force over a time period of 0 to 6.2 seconds. You could also reformulate this, try to do it in a minimum amount of time, but we're just going to do it in 6.2 seconds. And then we're going to um, try it with a mass of that object of 5. So we're going to do it first of all with m2 equals 1, and then we'll try it with m2 equals 5, a heavier object. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get started on this. We're going to do this in Python. There's also a solution here on the website in MATLAB. Um, you can you know, just come to uh, this address, or if you come to the Dynamic Optimization course, you're going to see under Control, there's Model Predictive Control. Just select that, and you'll see a little bit of instructional material there at the top. As well as down at the bottom, you'll see the solution in MATLAB and Python. Okay, but the one that we're going to be covering right now is the Gecko code, and then I'll also show you uh, a con contribution from one of the students in the class, the animation of this as well. Okay, so let me go ahead and just go through this. I'll go ahead and talk through it. Okay, and I'll just save this as crane.py. And as we're going to go through this, um, you know, this is going to be, we're going to first of all just go ahead and import some of our packages. Okay, we'll import NumPy and we'll also import Gecko. And then we'll also import matplotlib. Okay, and then next we're going to go ahead and build the model. And this is going to be a Gecko model in Python. So M equals Gecko. And then we're going to define our time horizon. We're going to go from 0 to 6.2, uh, but we're going to go a little further just to make sure everything's stationary. Okay, we're going to go in uh, 0.1 time increments. First of all, we have our mass of our cart, and then our mass of the thing that we're carrying. So the mass of the cart is 10, the thing that we're carrying is 1. And then we also define this final parameter that's going to be 0 everywhere, and then at the very last time point, it's going to be equal to um, okay, it's going to be equal to 1 at the very final time point. Okay, so now we have an if 
and then I have time is uh, greater than 6.2 we'll say that these final conditions are active okay in this in this case we're not just gonna do 6.2 but we're gonna go a little further beyond that all the way up to 7 just to make sure everything's stationary okay so we have our final equals 1 for anything over 6.2 seconds and final equals 0 for those that are not okay, and then we'll initialize our final parameter okay, and here's our manipulated variable this is a force on the cart it's initially going to be equal to 0 okay and then we have some variables like theta okay and you could have defined that u as an mv and then turned its status on as well okay there's our angular rate okay, initially equal to 0 for both of those okay and then we want our final position uh, is going to go from negative 1 to 0 or you could have it go from 0 to 1 you know either one there's our velocity uh, okay so initial conditions for both of those and then we have some equations in this case we're going to define this as a list of equations okay so there's our very first one that we had um, okay there's our second one these are just going to be the state space these are going to be the state space equations you know, just these four we're just doing the non-zero terms in that matrix and okay so this is okay there's our theta q I'll just bring this up really quick just to show the uh, okay I'll show bring up the equations a little bit later and just show those again and how those relate to the four that we just wrote now we're going to do objective we have final and then we want y to be equal to zero v to be equal to zero theta to be equal to zero and q to be equal to zero at the very final condition and then we'll also put a small factor in there for any u value changes from zero just to make sure we uh, get rid of any unnecessary changes in that okay i mode is going to be equal to six that's dynamic control or model predictive control and then we're going to solve it okay so there is our solve command and then the rest of this is just plotting the solution okay so we're going to create a new figure and then we'll access the results here we're going to create four new subplots and we'll do time versus our force to our cart make that a red line with line width two and then put our y label okay and also our legend okay next we're going to go on to our second subplot and this is going to be again time versus the velocity and we'll put a couple other things on these uh, plots as well um, you know just adding additional subplots to be able to visualize all of our values over this time window okay there's velocity okay the next one we're gonna add the third subplot and again this is going to be time for our x-axis and then y dot value that's our position it'll be a green dash uh, dotted line and here's our position okay so just continuing on okay there's our y label and then our fourth subplot as well this one we're gonna throw on both the angle the theta and then we'll also throw on the Q value which is going to be the angular acceleration okay and then once we're done with this we'll go ahead and run it and just look at the solution okay so we have theta and Q and we'll add that as a legend okay there's our Y label and we'll do an X label at the very bottom you know that's our time and then we'll show the figure okay so now we've created crane.py let me go ahead and just show the uh, equations one more time okay and then also our equations that we had here those are just the um, you know y dot equals V um, we just had to take you know multiply out those matrices you could also load it in in state space form if you wanted to 
Okay, so let's go ahead and run this, and I'm going to go ahead and run this with IDLE, although you could run it with any Python. Okay, that has the ability to run uh, Gecko, so you just have to pip install Gecko, and there is the solution. So that one's nice, but um, we have uh, Everton in the class. He created an animation. And so that is also included on that web page that I showed earlier. So if you'd like to animate it, just run this one. Um, this one is going to do the same solution. And then after it's done, it's going to then at this point create this animation okay, in Python. So there you can see with mass equals 1, it swings over and... Um, actually, I think this one might be with uh, mass equals 5. Well, let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, yeah, that was with the second part of the problem. Let's go back to mass equals 1. So we can just change that mass there. Okay, and then run it again. And then that'll create the new animation. Okay, you will also get a MPEG uh, save to whatever directory you're running from. So this is the thing that we're carrying along is going to be a uh, mass of 1. Okay, now we could also increase that now. Um, let's go ahead and just run this again. We saw that mass equals 5, so you can see the cart had to take you know, more action up above. But let's say we went up to something like 20. So now we're going to, uh, this is going to be twice the mass of the cart from up above. And we'll just run it again and get our solution and then it takes a little bit of time just for the animation to be created and for it to save the MPEG file okay so it's really acting there up at the top it goes forward quite a bit just to get the object to accelerate and we said we needed it there and stationary within 6.2 seconds so you can see the you know the time right up here in the top and then we proceed just a little further just to make sure we're stationary Okay, so it's uh, swinging it and then decelerating it. You can see the plots on the other uh, figure that opened as well. Okay, so this is a solution to, you know, move something attached uh, to an overhead crane, uh, you know, very quickly with a model predictive controller. In this case, a linear model that has consists of four equations that relates the force of the cart to the position of the object below.